please note that whilst recording this, the recording program in the background was trying to use up approximately 80% of the processor inside the laptop. Performance difference is actually much higher than real world performance. You can test this out yourself. I'll put 3D Mark results up on the screen now and later on in the video. And I'm sorry that this has happened. I'll try and not let it happen next time. It I'll leave a link to both of these results in the description so you can verify it yourself. So, to get more performance out of your laptop, you may choose the obvious option, which is to go down into your power options and slide it all the way to best performance and simply launch your game and enjoy it. And whilst this does offer higher performance than simply just using the power saving option, you're still being limited as typically these Ryzen laptops are only taking in about 12 watts in their TDP and so limiting them but to 12 watts means that these 12 watts are shared out between the processor and the graphics chip. Now typically under full load this processor can entirely use all of the 12 watts on its own so obviously when you're playing a game this isn't optimal as you need to share this out between your processor and your graphics chip otherwise you're going to end up with no game. However the built-in way right now to share it out seems to be far too lenient to the processor. It's always prioritizing the processor first above the graphics chip. Now obviously if you're prioritizing the processor over a graphics chip when you're trying to play a game that isn't the correct way around. You want more power to your graphics chip first and then your processor. Thankfully though, there is a way to somewhat do this. It isn't as good as I would have hoped it would be. I would optimally want something like an AMD Mobile Master for like Ryzen. But there's still this cool little trick you can do anyway. So as you can see right now, and I'll inflate up on the screen, you can see the frame rate I'm getting right now. So getting about 25 frames per second on the automation map on Beam NG Drive. Mind you, the game has not fully loaded just yet. As you can see, the trees in the distance don't look all that great. So I'll give it a few seconds to load everything in around me. Seems to like hovering around 25 though. And I'll just take a small drive around the track so you can get an idea for the frame rate we're getting. Mind you, this is currently running at 1080p, so this isn't all that bad, although you can see for a racing game it isn't great to be getting 24 frames per second, especially when the graphics are looking like this. It's just not really what you want, and especially when you go inside, it gets even worse as there's even more things to draw inside the cab. You can't even see the speedometer or anything else on it, it's just too low res to even bother using so you'll basically have to stay outside however there's a simple trick I use to get more performance I've used this in 3D Mark in fact I'll put some numbers up on the screen now so you can see the difference and whilst the difference won't be as pronounced in games it's definitely a noticeable improvement so as you can see right now 25 frames per second okay so let's get some more so to do this, what you want to do is open up this Cortana bar and type in power options. And if like you I'm getting right now, nothing comes up, like it says power and sleep settings, that is not the correct one. You may need to type in edit power plan and as you can see it's now came up what I want. You may have to use either one of them, it's a bit finicky. And at the top you want to go to power options. From here, you want to choose create a power plan, high performance, and give it a name. Give it something like GPU boost, and then choose next. Set these up exactly how you want them. You won't want to be using this on battery, so you don't spend too much time on this. Just set the turn off display time and the sleep timer, and then click create. Now that that's in effect, you want to go into change plan settings change advanced power settings and specifically you want to be going to power pros processor power management and as you can see you can open all these up now by simply changing the maximum power processor state to oh, let's 
go back to it. By simply setting the processor power management on the maximum processor states for a number lower than 100. So in this case, I'm going to set them both to 60. This can already be a dramatic improvement, but additionally, you want to make sure that you're always optimizing performance on plugged in and the AMD graphics power play settings knows to maximize your performance. Now, changing these, so you also might want to change the minimum processor state to uh, zero on plugged in. Now, by simply changing this to 60 on battery and 60 on plugged in, you're moving around where the power is going inside your processor. So you can see right off the bat, I've shot up straight from 23 frames per second lower and we're hitting as high as 32 now. So as you can see, we've already got a dramatic difference. And if I spend a little bit of time driving around, you'll see that where we were dipping into 20s right now, like the low 20s, even possibly the high teens, we're always sticking above 24. Not right now, but primarily sticking above 24, which was just not really happening before. Uh, obviously, BeamNG, if anyone else has played this will know, is a very processor-heavy game. So perhaps not the best option to choose. And by driving around, you are loading the map in, obviously, around you. If I reset again now, the FPS will start going back up. And also, you've got to note that this is taken whilst recording. When I'm not recording, normally the frame rate without this is about 25 to 30. And then, without recording with this GPU boost, I can hit as high as 45 frames per second in this position with some turned up graphics. So, it's definitely no joke. You definitely can get some extra performance out of this. This will depend, though, on the... TDP that was set by your manufacturer on your AMD Ryzen processor. If you have a brand such as Acer on their thin and light, for example, right now I'm using an Acer Swift 3, they're limiting their TDP to 12 watts. 12 watts for the processor, and then 3 watts is just dedicated to the graphics chip at all times to keep it operating, which is where 12 slash 15 comes in from. Obviously, 3 watts is not what it uses when you're playing games. But it's not much more than 3 watts, and it clearly needs that. Other manufacturers, such as HP, this little trick may not be as pronounced. You may see much smaller jumps, or even no jump at all, to a negative performance impact. So it really does depend on who manufactures it. This is because HP, on their higher-end Envy lineup, seem to be choosing 25 watts, which is much preferred for this kind of a device. Additionally, along with this um, GPU boosting trick to change the percentage, feel free to change the percentage. Depending on the game you're playing, you may want to actually offer a bit more performance to your graphics chip or a bit more performance to a processor. Playing a game like this, 60% is a bit too low, 70 to 80% is probably a nicer spot for this, but it still made a difference. In games that are mostly graphics, graphically run, so for example, a game off the top of my head, I can't really think of anything, maybe Rainbow Six Siege for example, that seems to love graphics performance a lot more than processor, and so maybe choosing an even lower number on the processor would offer you even better performance on the graphics, but a game maybe such as Fortnite likes a lot of its processing power too, so... It really does depend, not only this, but if you want to get even more performance out of these laptops, not only are they normally TDP limited, they're also temperature limited. And so, getting the temperatures down by any means possible will offer you better performance as well. So, to do this, you may want to, for example, put on a laptop cooling stand. Now, these aren't always proven to help, but this is hugely dependent on your laptop. A Laptop such as the Acer Swift 3 only has one small fan and so giving it some extra help with another fan definitely would not hurt, especially as the entire chassis is used as a way to cool down the laptop. Because uh, 75 degrees is quite low obviously. And then also if you're more advanced you may want to use a trick such as repasting to get even further performance. 
Um, I believe that even using something as far as liquid metal could hugely improve the performance of one of these laptops, although obviously once you've liquid, liquid metaled it, your laptop is essentially stuck in that place for the rest of its life until you take it out again. But, you know, mess around with these enough and you may get a sizable amount more performance than you would be expecting. So I hope you've enjoyed. If this trick worked for you, leave a like, subscribe. I'll be doing more on my Vega-based laptop. And I'll see you next time.